Hey everyone, Andy Waddell with Form Films, and welcome to Grade in 10. My goal is to share my personal process to key, grade, composite, any shot in roughly 10 minutes in DaVinci Resolve. The point of that is to put some professional guardrails around my time so that at the end of the day, I come out with a grade for a project or a section of a project that's largely representative of where I want to take it and also suitable to show the client to get an idea of what's coming. So let's walk through a Red Gemini 5K shot captured in our Form Films green screen studio. Here we go. To begin, we are working in DaVinci YRGB color space. This is the super wide, awesome color space. The new science makes all the things awesome and pretty and pops them out rec seven or nine at the end. So let's start making some nodes and we are going to take Beth, our lovely host and composite her into this carpet store. As a former musician, I am a huge fan of curves. The reason being it's visual EQ. It's the way my brain thinks. So you will see me use a combination of wheels and curves in every grade project. Um, so yeah, so first off, I'm gonna jump up the exposure, get it to where it feels good looking at the parade and looking at my Flanders. So liking that. Next up, dropping in the 3D gear. A message to Fusion. I know that you're there. I know you key. I know you do visual effects so good. But I don't know you. I don't know how to talk to you or work with you. So I'm going to key this shot in the color tab and it's still going to be cool. Sorry. All right, guys, here's what I do. I'm going to flip this 3D keyer to use the lab color space. This is a fun color science that I'm just now beginning to explore. From my understanding is that it sees color a little more like the human eye sees it or it manipulates color in that way. And it's great, I think, for keying, and it also is great for some grading and effects on the back end. So I'm going to start by just doing a broad sweeping stroke. And then I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to go back here and add a stroke to grab this little bit of green right around her hair. Might be a touch too much, but we'll see. Okay, this is not going to be the final end all be all grade uh excuse me key well or grade so i'm gonna i'm gonna basically get a working key here and we're gonna walk away at the end of this with something that's very close to finished let's see how this plays dang that's pretty nice that's actually really nice okay i'm gonna despill it and voila that's looking pretty zesty all right Next up, I'm gonna add a couple of nodes. Go ahead and do primary. I can't type, okay, primary. I'm going to add an adjustment. I'm going to add way down here on the end, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my sharpening. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just grabbing this, dropping the sharpening radius down to about 0.46. And in front of that, I'm gonna drop my denoising. Uh, here's my deal with denoising. If I'm grading a fully practically shot shot, I'm going to denoise at the beginning and I'm going to dial it in very carefully to handle shadows, blacks, grays, whites, all the good stuff, all the funny colors in the middle. If I'm dealing with green screen, I'm going to put it at the end. The reason being is if you've got somebody on camera waving, you get all those nice blurry mess in their fingers and green and all that. And it's hard enough to deal with, but denoising can actually make that even weirder and and interpret interpolate it and create funky artifacts and looks like their fingers are curly cues and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm going to avoid putting that in front of my key, put it on the back end. It takes care of any of the digital artifact noise just fine. And I think your key still comes out really good. So that's why it's on the back end. And I'm going to dial it in pretty minimal. Just keep it to the small bits, dial it up to about 15%. And uh, I'm going to put just a little bit of spatial, super low. It can get really messy really quickly. I just want to do a little bit to take care of anything that um, the preliminary one, the, uh, sorry, temporal one does not do. All right, let's jump back to primaries. All right, primaries, here we go. 
All right, I'm gonna use the offset and all I'm gonna do is pull back a little bit of the inherent ready orangeness of uh, the red sensor. And it's gonna be just a touch, I'm gonna disable it, enable it. You can already see her skin tone and her hair kind of separating her skin and hair there are very orange. Uh, this is clearing it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna park that right there. It's a really minimal amount of, of curve or uh, a wheel, just really, really small amount. All right, I'm gonna jump over here to adjustment. Um, I grade a lot of red Gemini footage and I always feel like reds have a lot of red in the shadows and I love to use the curves to pull that out just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab right here, I'm just gonna pull. Pull a touch. Doesn't have to be all of it, but it's gonna be a little bit. The other thing about reds, and I feel like skin tones always have a little bit too much green, um, at least the way the camera was set up this time. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and just pull a little bit out. So if I toggle this on and off, off, on, on, I'm liking the way that's feeling. Okay, next up, I'm gonna set up three parallel nodes to isolate some different parts of her and then merge her back together. So. Starting at the top, skin, followed by shirt, followed by lab jacket. Why am I calling it lab jacket? Because I am going to put this node in lab CIE color space. And the reason being is I want to play with her yellow jacket using the lab color space, and it's gonna be zesty. All right, coming down here. To tackle skin, I'm gonna grab my qualifier and I'm gonna jump over to 3D qualifier, which is like my best friend in the world. Let's try to grab her skin without getting too much jacket in here. And that ain't bad, actually. Okay, so let's grab the plus tool. Let's see if we can get a little more of her hand in there without getting too much jacket. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to Give it just a little bit of love to try to clip out most of her jacket. I always like to push these controls a little too far and then bring them back to where it's working. All right, let's, let's put it right about there for now. So I'm gonna flip my scopes to vector scope and I wanna watch and see, is her skin tone aligning with the skin tone line right there? It's looking pretty good, but what I wanna do is put color compressor on here. And as you can see, this is flared out a little bit where there's a pretty decent hue range in her skin tone. And I'm gonna grab with the eyedropper part of her skin that I feel like looks representative of where I wanna take her in the grade. And then I'm just gonna use the compression to tighten up her skin tone. And then I'm gonna do the same to tighten up the saturation of her skin tone. And this is a fantastic tool if someone does not have as lovely skin as Beth, and instead has extremely blotchy skin, or pale and lots of different color tones, this is a great tool to align it and unify it. Um, so, solo it up, I'm gonna use my wheels, my offset wheel, I'm just gonna pull it a little tighter to the line and I'm gonna push it a little further in saturation. And then I'm gonna toggle it off and back on. Well, look at how warm and friendly she is. Off, on, off, on, love it. Now, there is a little bit of hair in there, I get it. That's fine, I could track her face, isolate that. I'm not gonna do that, this is a 10 minute grade. And besides, I don't mind if her hair, which is already generally that tone, has just a little bit of color in it. It's not gonna bother me. All right, let's do the shirt next. Okay, 3D qualifier. I'm gonna grab the shirt all the way down to the jeans. Oh, that was good, that worked out really well. Okay, I'm gonna black clip it. Let's see if I can crunch out her hair. There we go. It's a lot of black clip. I might go back and tweak this later, but for now this works. In case you're wondering, I have already keyed and graded this shot because I had to for a project. Okay, um, I'm gonna come over here and first of all, her shirt's nice, but it's gray. I want it to be a little brighter and a little wider. So what I'm gonna do now that it's isolated is I'm just gonna pop 
some exposure up a little bit in the high mids or low highs. And then I'm gonna come over here to saturation and I'm just going to deset this to about 15%. Boom, boom, so let's do jobs, boom. Okay, so what I love about this now, if I toggle it off and on, off, it's really blending in with her skin and it's blending in with her jacket. But kicking it on, boom, it just pops out. It becomes a third part of the, of the color palette. So we've got her skin very clearly different than the shirt, very different than the jacket, or it will be different than the jacket in mere moments. All right, lab, going back to our qualifier, 3D. Here we go, this is detecting color in the alternate color science of lab CIE. So we play with dropper to get kind of the best Best thing I can get. That's pretty good. Now I know, having already graded this, that I'm gonna fight with her hair on her jacket, but I'm also gonna lean into it and let it be. Because it's sitting on her jacket, it would naturally absorb some of the color and it's not bothering me, but I am gonna cut it out of her hair on her head. So what I'm gonna do is mask this. I'm gonna stretch this out until it's more or less kind of the arc of her shoulders. I kind of want it to match her shoulders. I'm gonna bring it down and kind of taper it off. I might shorten that taper. I'm gonna let it kind of blend up into her hair uh, or up toward her face, but um, still keep it down here. So now what I love about this is if I come over here to my blue, it's gonna behave very differently. I'm gonna push blue into it or I'm gonna push yellow into it. Green actually pushes green into it or red into it. So you actually have individual control over red, green, blue, and yellow. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna use the blue slider to push or, or uh, curve to push more yellow in, just a touch. I'm not gonna overdo it, just a touch. And then I'm actually gonna just adjust saturation about 5%. Now, if I unsolo that, and now I toggle it on and off, there's her jacket without it. There's her jacket with it. It just pops. It pulls that kind of hazy blueness out and just pops, really pops. All right, so if I toggle her entire separation here, that's off. And now here comes her skin, shirt, and jacket. Kaboom. Love it. Okay. After this node, before my denoise, I'm going to do one more node. I'm going to call it lab. I'm going to once again put this into lab color space. What I'm going to do, because of the way it behaves, is I'm simply going to roll my shadows right here. I'm going to roll these shadows down. And what's going to happen is it's just going to, what I like to call tightening up the lows. It's just going to pull some more of that red out of the lower end and push a little bit more blue in. And it's going to create a really nice separation. I'm only going to push it about 5 or 6%. Oh, I love that. Love that. All right, here, I'm going to turn it off and then back on. Now, you can see her jeans are a little warmer here. Now they're on, it's, when it's on now, they're, um, it's a little, it's a little bluer, richer navy, but it did kind of reverse, <laughs> negate our uh, jacket adjustment. So I'm just gonna go back to jacket and I'm just gonna push it a little more. Just a little more, here we go. Okay, so I am pretty close to done, except that we have this giant black hole on the right. So all I'm going to do is come to my key here, insert a node in front of it. I'm going to call it mask. I like to not use the garbage mat, excuse me, in 3D keyer because it is garbage. It glitches, it's quirky, I don't like it. And if you rescale your footage or reposition it or punch in or out, it can really get janky. So what I do is instead just simply use the regular mask tool on a node in front of my keyer. And then I can do anything in post in terms of reframing shots, et cetera, et cetera. And it works like a champ. So I'm just gonna line it up. I don't get any weird like perspective changes. And then I'm gonna feed the alpha into my keyer. Skadoosh, and there it is. So let's see. All right, so all in, I'll disable everything. And then that's what we started with. And kaboom. That's what we ended with. Now let me just isolate her. So this is her with her key, but everything else turned off and then graded, kaboom. 
Now, I had already worked with the shot. The background's already been touched a little bit. This is just an image off Google. Um, I would spend a little more time now balancing her to the background. That's not really what I wanted to do here. I just wanted to get a 10 minute grade and key that's client presentable, that communicates the end goal of the project. But at the same time, um, you know, the next day I'm gonna come back with fresh eyes and look at it again. So I think we've done it. All right, that's it. Um, love for you guys to click the follows, the subscribes, the bells, the buttons, the knobs, the levers, turn them all, flip them all, tweak them all. Stay in touch. All the uh, Facebooks, the Instagrams, the LinkedIn's, the Twitters, the YouTubes. We're on all of them. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks for grading. And uh, look forward to next time. I'll jump into a different clip and we'll do it again. Take care.